Pinterest revenue rose 58% year over year to $443 million in the third quarter. Pinterest stock has tripled since its IPO. Let's run a discounted cash flow model on Pinterest and figure out whether it's a buy or a sell. Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and if you wanna catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Pinterest stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. Pinterest is an image sharing and social media service which enables saving and discovery of images, animated GIFs, and videos. The site has 400 million active users. The company generates all its revenue from advertisements. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $35.4 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. They're trading at $58.38 a share and they have 463 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if a company has positive free cash flow, it makes it a lot easier for them to pay down debt, pay dividends, acquire other businesses, or invest back into their business to grow it. If a company has negative free cash flow, it might not be able to do any of those things unless it takes on more debt. This company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement, it's revenue minus expenses. And they also have negative net income every year. So their financials don't look so good so far. Revenue looks good though, it grows from 473 million to 1.2 billion. So they're growing pretty rapidly. In 2019, their revenue was 1.1 billion, cost of revenue 358 million. So the difference between those two numbers is the gross profit, 783 million. The reason they have negative net income was their high operating expense. They spend a ton of money in R&D and marketing. So when you take gross profit minus operating expenses, you have negative $1.4 billion of operating income. So you can see here, this is from the annual report, they spent more than 100% of their revenue in R&D. In 2018, they only spent 33% of their revenue in R&D. And in 2019, half of their revenue was spent in marketing. And in 2018, 34% of revenue was spent in marketing. The reason for these large increases was due to share-based compensation. Share-based compensation is a way of paying employees with equity. This is a non-cash item, so it must be added back on the statement of cash flows. The income statement will not show share-based compensation, but it is there inside the expense category. Let me show you share-based compensation on the statement of cash flows. To calculate free cash flow, it's cash flow from operations, which is on top, minus capex. So operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's financial health than net income because in order to calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, then you add back the non-cash items from the income statement. You also adjust for changes in working capital. So you can see the net income in 2019 was negative $1.4 billion, but the company had to add back the $1.4 billion stock-based compensation since it was a non-cash item. Employees received $1.4 billion worth of stock options, but they didn't receive any stock. They may receive the stock in the future. So if there was a computer programmer that Pinterest really wanted on their staff, but they couldn't afford him, what they would do is offer him $500,000 of stock options and then pay him a $100,000 salary. So he feels he's getting $600,000, but he's only actually getting $100,000, but possibly in the future he'll get the $500,000 when the stock vests. So you can see that quarterly revenue has grown quite a bit from 2016 to 2019. Quarterly U.S. revenue grew from 111 million to 350 million. It more than tripled. International revenue grew 12 times in that same period. So it seems like the best return on investment is to grow their international market. Let's look at a capital structure. They have no debt, $2 billion of equity. The cost of equity is 13.84%. And to calculate cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a beta of 1.5. And their WAC is 13.84%, the cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. 
We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 32 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $20 billion. We divide that by 463 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $44. They're trading at $58, so they're trading at a 34% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply, Wall Street values them at $28. It was really hard to value this company because the valuation comes out negative if I used their prior financial information. I had to do a lot more research for this company. I looked into a lot of things such as what analysts predict the future cash flows to be. I looked at the growth patterns of their peers and applied it to this model. Let's see what the stock has been trading at the past few years. So the stock was trading in the mid 20s for a while, but it looks like it doubled in the past six months. It is making a lot of investors money, but they're not turning a profit. So I'm not sure how they're gonna continue this unless they could eventually make some money. If you invested $100 in Pinterest in April 2019, you'd have about $75 in December 2019. The Dow Jones and S&P 500 performed a lot better during that same time frame. The company has never paid a dividend and does not plan to pay a dividend in the future. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd in 2013, you'd have 23,500 today. That's 135% return. This shows us the quarterly monthly active users. And you can see globally, the company has been increasing pretty much every single quarter. But in the United States, it's almost been flat. It grew a little bit, but hasn't really grown too much. Their international market is growing at a rapid pace. Let's look at the risk factors the company mentions in their annual report. The first risk it mentions that the company needs to continuously attract, retain, and engage its user base. A majority of the users on their platform are women ages 18 to 64. It mentions that it may not be able to continue to grow that demographic, so it may have to focus on other demographics. Another risk is that the company needs to continue to provide useful content and block objectionable content. So it says, if pinners do not believe that we offer content that is useful and relevant to their personal taste and interest, user growth, retention, or engagement may decline, which could result in the loss of advertisers and revenue. Another risk is if the company does not develop successful new products or improve existing ones, their business may suffer. They have to continuously make sure the content is fresh and new and exciting, else their users may go somewhere else. If the security of the site is compromised, pinners and advertisers may go somewhere else. So the company has to stay ahead of the curve and make sure cyber attacks and hacking don't happen, but not to mention bugs in their system. They have to make sure their software is working flawlessly so it does what they originally planned it to do. Pinterest relies on search engine directing potential users to their website. So if search engines like Google or Yandex change their algorithm, that could really affect Pinterest business. It mentions that in the first quarter of 2018, Google de-indexed our keyword landing pages, which negatively impacted traffic and user growth in the quarters that followed. It may be difficult for an investor to forecast these things, but it could have a really major impact on the company if these types of things occur. There's a lot of competition with other sites like Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, Snap, Twitter, Google. So Pinterest has to constantly stay ahead of the curve and keep their customers happy. And these really large companies like Facebook and Google could do something really similar to Pinterest that affects Pinterest business significantly. The company generates all of its revenue from advertising, so it has to continuously attract new advertisers. And there's no contract in place, so advertisers can go anywhere they want to. Some advertisers don't exactly understand what Pinterest does, so Pinterest has to educate potential advertisers as well. When we looked at the financials earlier, we saw the company gave a lot of stock options to its employees. When those options vest, it will dilute your stock. Although these stock options are great ways to get new employees or retain employees, it could be really harmful if you give out too many options. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 16.8, the median is 15.2, PE is stock price over earnings per share to calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're negative, since they have negative net income, we can't look at PE. The average price of sales is 4.6, the median is 2.0. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 22.3, so investors are paying $22.30 for $1 of revenue. The average price to book is 4.7, the median is 2.3.
price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 13.3, so investors are paying $13.30 for a $1 book value. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. They don't have any interest payments, so we don't need to look at the interest coverage ratio. The average and median ROE is 12%. ROE is net income over equity. They have a negative ROE since they have negative net income. The average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, they are 11.7, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. A current ratio above 2 can be a sign the company is inefficient with the use of its current assets. So as you can see on their current assets, most of it is in cash. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Spotify, Facebook, Alphabet, Groupon, Match, Trivago, Twitter, Yelp, and Yandex. All in the same industry as Pinterest. And if Pinterest has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. Their price of sales is a lot higher than average, so they're much worse. They're doing a little better in price to book. They have the highest current ratio of all the companies. Negative ROE. They're no debt, similar to most companies in this industry. You generally don't need much equipment, maybe some computers, to be in this industry. That's why a lot of these companies don't use debt. And their market cap is lower than average, although it's a pretty big market cap at $35 billion. And nobody pays a dividend in this industry. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. I respond to all comments. Also, if you'd like to do a private Zoom session with me, get a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.